Duster is D E S T E R, right? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm, you know, I'm obsessed with music, and I'm very, uh, it gives me life back, and I'm really passionate about that relationship with music. So, you know, it, it isn't any effort for me. Uh, the effort is getting on airplanes and staying in hotels and, you know, the, the hassles of, of, of touring, but the music, uh, the music is, is so worth it, you know, the, the experience of playing for audiences and seeing people really get something, some new experience. And we've had that comment a lot on this tour that, well, I never heard anything like this in a concert. And I, I, don't, I don't know what it is myself. I mean, we're just doing what we do. But there's, I know that that experience of recreating kind of in the moment on the stage is what keeps me going, you know. If I were just playing the same thing every night, I probably would be retired by now. And I'm surprised at the interest, uh, that, for instance, in our concerts in Sweden uh, and Vilnius, uh, the people, the majority of the audience were young people. And that kind of like, that's encouraging. You know, that we can speak across eight decades to to some people and they're, they're, it's a good communication, they're, they're being moved by it. So I, I see it as being a living thing. I, I never called myself a minimalist. I mean, when I wrote NC, I didn't even know the term. Minimalist is a term is exceedingly dry. It sounds like a very uninteresting person who puts himself in a square rectangle and, and lives out his life there. A uh, psychedelist would never be dry because it's all about visionary, it's all about uh, inspiration and magic. So that's what, that, those are my goals in music, is to take something ordinary, transform it into something exceptional. It does allow musicians a freedom to, to come together with still retaining their own kinds of personalities, but listening to each other and making, you know, making music together that's both classical and other than classical, kind of either jazz-like or world music. So it, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have so many rules that anybody feels enslaved by it. And it always opens up the path to a new kind of performance. It doesn't, doesn't block anybody from doing something new. And, and the more imaginative musicians have made operas out of it and, you know. So I think it's just like a you know, set of clothes or something you can put on and, you know, look like that for a while. <laughs> Nobody's the boss, you know, it doesn't have a soloist on top. And also amateurs, professionals can play together, classical and jazz can play together. So it, 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 I just, I think it's just open enough that it allows a lot of people to participate. I, I, I don't tend to cite favorite things of mine because it's usually my favorite is what I'm listening to at the time. But you know, there's a, uh, something like the Harp of New Albion, which is a large work for, for piano and just intonation, is not um, a piece that's very popular with the, is that power going out? You know, I, I think that I'm as much a jazz musician as I am anything else. And jazz is a very broad term. I mean, if somebody like Cecil Taylor can be a jazz musician, I can be a jazz, you know, there's, or Anthony Braxton, or, you know. And why these people all have similar goals that I, I do in making music. And they're basically people who like to create music in the moment. Also to swing a bit. And I like to swing a bit in my music, maybe a little differently than jazz. Uh, so, yeah, I think that uh, it's been really important to me. Uh, it's, it's some of the people I admire the most are jazz musicians, because I know I understand what they're doing. I, I understand what it takes to to bring this kind of performance, and it's not respected as much in a lot of ways as it should be. Music world is often controlled by things outside of music, and what people are fed today you know, by, by media, what's, what's emphasized, tends to overlook the real uh, talented people that are working today in jazz and, and uh, pushing things forward. I don't think it's dead by any, I mean, there's great jazz club, there's a, San Francisco just built a big jazz center, there's lo lots of wonderful musicians coming there to play. 
There's lots of involvement now with world music and jazz. So it's just that the general public doesn't, at least in America, doesn't get as much um, exposure to what, what, what's going on. It's this thing of unexpected transformation that happens as you're playing music. And there's no other way to explain it. It's nothing that you create, it's something that happens. And so uh, it means a lot to me because it's my goal. It's what I, you know, I could, go, I could come here and tonight and, and be not on and play a really dull concert. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm hoping, no, I'm hoping the magic will happen. You know, that something that's better than Terry Riley will be there on the stage. <laughs> You're welcome.